Our next paper bears the title, Sodom, South Central, Gotham, Revitalizing Cities Through the Church. Please welcome Kobe Schaefer. Who would rather be at Disneyland right now? <laughs> Close your eyes and imagine walking down Main Street as you hear the clip-clop of horses' hooves and smell fresh pastries. You then walk straight to Tomorrowland and your favorite ride, Space Mountain. Walking among the massive silver buildings make you wonder what a future city could look like. You speed through the dark hallways, board your rocket ship, and slowly start to inch forward. You wave at the ride operator above you, but are disappointed to see she does not wave back. A couple minutes later, you return to the boarding station, your hair disheveled, your eyes slightly watering, and your whole group laughing uncontrollably. Few would reject this fantasy. Why? What makes Disneyland so irresistible? Why does Magic Mountain not draw as many crowds as Disneyland? If you think about Disneyland, you may realize that it places you in cities you do not experience on a daily basis. Tomorrowland makes you experience a futuristic city. Walking through Frontierland feels like walking through an old western city. That may be one of the reasons why Disneyland is so popular. Magic Mountain is solely based on thrills of rides. And while that may appeal to some, it seems based on statistics most should not prefer this focus. Thus it seems that all cities are appealing to humans and have some sort of significance. The question is, why? Some of these answers may come when one looks through scripture and human history. This reveals that God is trying to establish his presence here on earth. This is evident in many Old Testament events. The first is the construction of the tabernacle, a place where God could reside with his people on earth. The next is the temple. The temple is similar in that it is God's house and thus is filled with his presence. We then move to the New Testament with the birth of Jesus, the incarnation of God's presence with his people. Following Jesus' ascension, the Holy Spirit now permanently resides with his people following the events on the day of Pentecost. Now that the Holy Spirit dwells within all Christians, as the church expands, the presence of God also begins to spread outward. The Bible concludes with John's vision of the city of New Jerusalem, a city that is completely filled with his presence. Theologians who study these events in Revelation mainly disagree on the how and when of these ends of days events. This has mainly separated people into two distinct groups, premillennialists and postmillennialists. Premillennials believe that Christ will return before the millennium and take away the church in an event known as the rapture. This is followed by the thousand-year reign of Christ and the defeat of evil. Postmillennialists believe that Christ's second coming will occur after the millennium, when the influence of Christianity has spread throughout the world. Postmillennialists also take the task of dominion given to Adam and Eve very literally. They show that throughout history, we see the continual growth of influence of Christianity in the world and believe that that is not going to stop until the Great Commission is fulfilled. God is establishing his presence here on earth, and as Christians, the Great Commission calls us to expand his kingdom, which is accomplished by expanding the church. Biblically, historically, and pragmatically, the clearest way to expand the kingdom of God is through cities. Therefore, strengthening our focus on planning and revitalizing churches within cities is the most effective, most effective strategy to fulfill the Great Commission and establish God's presence here on earth. The discussion of these cities must begin in Genesis. During creation, God created Adam and Eve and gave all of humanity an order of dominion. This was an order to fill the earth and subdue it. However, what are we to do with this order? Neglecting this would be ignoring a responsibility that Christians have. Yet, unfortunately, this is a reality today. Christians are simply watching as the world falls apart with sin. They do not take the Christian mandate of dominion seriously enough and do not properly understand their purpose here on earth. They see the evil in the world and believe that there is no hope and thus think it is pointless to try to make the world better. However, this belief neglects another specific duty given to Christians. Prior to his ascension in his great commission, Jesus says, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. However, there's responsibility that comes with the Great Commission and the Order of Dominion. 
If we are commanded to evangelize all nations, then we must work to make this a reality. In order to do this, Christians must look at cities in a different way. Al Barth writes about the power of cities in his A Vision for Our Cities. He points out that we cannot continue to view cities as places of evil. In fact, God loved all cities, both those inhabited by his people, such as Jerusalem, and those that were not, such as Nineveh. Even though this was a different time, it seems that this pattern of cities we see in the Bible is applicable today. How and why are cities important? First of all, statistics show that cities are where people are and will be in the future. Next, cities are the key centers of influence culturally, spiritually, and nearly every other way. Whatever develops in the city tends to have a major effect on whatever develops in the nation and often the world. What should Christians do about it? Christians cannot view cities as evil, despite some of the evil within cities. They are the best tool to fulfill the Great Commission because of the influx of population. But unfortunately at this time, Christians, Christians are not using them. Some churches are abandoning the city, their main method of evangelization. They may believe that because the, because the evil in cities, such as poverty, crime, and violence, is a pointless task to attempt to make an impact. However, that is exactly why churches are needed. Therefore, Christians must increase their influence by planning and revitalizing churches within cities. How should Christians renew cities? We can plan as many churches as we want, but if they're not being effective, then it is a waste of time. Timothy Keller discusses this in his A Theology of Cities. First, churches must show people how to integrate their faith in their work. Keller writes that most churches do not give people guidance on how to go about their secular jobs. This cannot continue in the future. Churches must also put a very high priority on evangelism. They must try to come up with creative and innovative ways for evangelizing different kinds of people. The church must also form relationships with all kinds of people. This relationship builds trust and readies hearts to receive the gospel. Regarding the churches specifically, there must be several church planning movements in different denominations, as some denominations will reach some people better than others. These churches will need several things. First of all, a network of prayer must be formed in which the churches come together to pray. There must also be frequent meetings of church leaders. In these meetings, they must put their denominational differences aside and focus on the needs of the city. Dr. David R. Reagan poses an objection when he writes, Is the mission of the church to convert all nations? The Bible teaches that it is the responsibility of the church to preach the gospel, not to convert the world. Reagan believes that Christians should not be focused on transforming the world but instead just on preaching the gospel. However, it seems that Reagan's view is too limiting. In his Great Commission, Jesus says the words, make disciples of all nations. This command seems to be one of evangelization, one of converting nations to Christianity, not just preaching. Although it is true that it is the church's responsibility to preach the gospel, Reagan stopping there is a limitation Jesus did not give. Christians today are tempted to think the evil in cities is beyond hope and it might not be a place for them to live. However, the importance of cities for reaching people for God cannot be denied. In his Great Commission, Jesus calls all Christians to make disciples of all nations and spread the gospel to the world. Cities are a vital tool to accomplish this. The city may seem evil, but that is exactly why they need Christians. Therefore, Christians must attempt to plant more churches within cities in order to increase God's presence in the world. Admittedly, this is no simple task. Reaching an entire city is a daunting undertaking, and it is not a one-day job. However, as Christians, we must know, it is our mission to transform the world, that reaching cities is the best strategy to do so, and look to the new Jerusalem as our future hope of a fully transformed world. Thank you.